Hi, welcome back. This is day three in the shop and today I will be sanding, painting a finish, as well as cutting out uh, a hexagonal mirror to go in the back here and a piece of plywood to put behind that and cutting out some um, holes for the, the wall hanging brackets and hopefully we will be done today. I begin sanding the outer faces with 80 grit sandpaper, making sure to get rid of the excess wood filler while preserving the edges. A quick check on my progress and you can already see that the gaps are hardly noticeable. I continue with a 150 grit sanding net to smooth out the faces. Finally, I finish the inside and outside with a 220 grit sanding sponge and gently touch the outside corners with 150 grit sandpaper. Once I determine the orientation of the hexagons, I mark the spot where I'm going to drill the holes for the hanger bolts. If the back of the shelf were a clock face, I want the holes at approximately 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. I'm going to use a doweling jig to help me drill the holes perfectly straight into the wood. A drill press would be better, but I don't own one yet. These are the 3 inch hanger bolts that I got from Rockler Woodworking. The end with the fine threads goes into the wood and the pointy end is supposed to go into the wall for hanging. I make sure that the hole is deep enough for half the bolt to sink in. And then I do the same for the other side. But this time, I'm pulling out the drill frequently to release the wood chips that are stuck inside the hole. I'm doing a quick test of these hanger bolts and I hope they work. This will be my first time using hanger bolts. Now I'm going to cut out the plywood piece for the back. I have an extra sheet of 8th inch plywood that's enough for all my shelves. I trace inside the groove with a pencil and then cut out the shape with a jigsaw. I'm not trying to be perfect here, I just need the shape to be within the pencil mark. Here I am lining up the inside edge of the box with one of the straight edges of this mirror. That way I have one less cut to make. I bought 1 8 inch glass mirror from a local supplier who could sell me his scraps for less. If this is your first time cutting glass, I recommend that you buy a lot of extra mirrors, like double what you think you'll need. This is my first time and I made plenty of mistakes and wasted a bunch of material. I marked the inside of the groove with a sharpie marker, and yes, the marker does come off with glass cleaner. To cut the mirror, you're going to need a straight edge that doesn't slip, some lubricating oil, a glass cutting tool that you can buy for $5, gloves, eye protection, a wooden dowel, and an accessible trash can. I start by dipping the tool into the oil, lining up the straight edge, and scoring both ends first. Then, and this is the hard part, I start close to my body, push down hard on the cutter with my thumb, and slowly trace a line forward to the other end in one motion. Only do this once and don't retrace. Then place the scored line right over a wooden dowel, take a deep breath and push down on the mirror. It should snap straight. But this isn't my first try. I did it wrong a bunch of times because I was retracing my score line. I was scared to snap the mirror and I was snapping it off the edge of the table which meant that I had to hold and snap at the same time. I like this dowel method better. I also forgot to tap the glass with the ball on the other end of the cutting tool. You're supposed to do that, and I totally forgot, but I don't think it made a difference.
Here's a close-up of how I cut the mirror. I check to see if the mirror fits in the groove behind the shelf. Sometimes it fits, and sometimes it doesn't. If I'm lucky, I can fix it by nipping off a corner with pliers, but otherwise, I just have to start over and be more careful to cut within the lines. Before gluing on the back pieces, I finish the wood completely with teak oil, wipe-on polyurethane, and 600 grit sandpaper. This takes several days, but it's worth the wait. Then, I clean the mirror with Windex and paper towels, drop it in place, and squeeze clear caulk into the edges and on the back. Any kind of filler or adhesive will work. I like clear caulk because if it spills out a little, it'll be less noticeable. Then, I pop in the plywood backer, fill some gaps, wipe it off, and I'm done. My blue gloves are really handy in this case because I can change them out if I accidentally touch the silicone caulk. That stuff gets stuck to everything and I would hate to smear it on the pretty face of the wood. I was optimistic about hanging the shelves late in the afternoon, but it was much harder than I anticipated. The first honeycomb shelf is about two feet wide and it's heavy, which made everything harder. It took me three tries to get it right and then I gave up for the night. I had much better luck the following day. Here are the steps I took to hang these shelves. First, figure out where it's going to go and draw a level line that will be at either the top or the bottom of the hexagon. Then, use the hanger bolts to mark the wall where you're going to place the anchors. However, instead of using the original 3 inch hanger bolts to do this, I bought two shorter bolts from the hardware store. I place them in the holes, pointy side out, and the points sit much closer to the back face and will therefore help me get a more accurate mark. Line up the shelves perfectly with the level line and press into the wall, making sure that the pointy ends make an impression. Place anchors into the wall by drilling a hole at each mark. I had better luck with these green ribbed anchors than with the blue smooth ones. Pick a drill bit that seems just a bit too small. You want a very tight fit because there will be a lot of pushing and pulling on the hanger bolts. Next, screw in the pointy side of your 3 inch hanger bolts using a pair of pliers. Make sure that the bolts are straight and not skewed. Finally, slip the shelf in place. If it doesn't slide easily, then your holes may be too tight or the bolts are misaligned. This is frustrating, but if all else fails, hopefully you've chosen a very loose design and you can pick a new spot and start over. The rest of the installations go much more easily because the pieces keep getting smaller. One thing that can be annoying is hitting a stud when drilling a hole. This happened to me once, and I still wanted to use the anchor, so I had to widen the space behind the drywall by wiggling the drill around. And one more time, here's a close-up of me installing the fourth honeycomb shelf. Notice here how the top edge sticks out from the wall. This is because the collar of the anchor sits proud of the wall. So, for a finishing touch, I'm going to stick these rubber bumpers behind the bottom edge to level it out.
I am finally finished building and installing these honeycomb shelves. And I gotta say, wow, yeah, they look great. I am so excited, I can't wait to show everyone. I really like how the mirrors make the room look so much bigger. Cutting the mirrors was not easy, but I think it was worth the effort. If you're thinking about building something like this, please check out my blog, where I will detail step by step how I built this, as well as tell you some of the mistakes I made along the way, so that you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. And as always, thank you for watching. Happy woodworking, and I'll see you next time.